All right, reverse engineering time and trying to figure out what this component is on this uh, PDP-1124 circuit board. If you look at my previous video, I was tearing down a mini computer uh, CPU board and I found this chip throughout the actual circuit board, but I couldn't find a data sheet. So um, the purpose of this video is to uh, sort down what this is. Um, and of course, the best way to do that is to take one off the circuit board and uh, de-encapsulate it, take that uh, epoxy packaging off and uh, we're going to expose it and find the silicon die. From that, we can actually then sort down its function, uh, map out its transistors and resistors, and uh, start to figure out uh, what it actually does. Okay, so here's a photograph of the actual die once I uh, got the plastic package removed. These black uh, stripes are gold wires, the bond wires going back to what would have been the lead frame. Uh, and of course, you can see the sort of characteristic details of a late, well, probably mid 70s design. This metal ring out here is the ground ring. Uh, these, of course, are the bond pads. You can see them here and here. Uh, if you look closely, there's a, it looks like almost like a symmetry going on here. It looks like this side here and this side here. They just flipped, flipped the design over, uh, which kind of indicates maybe there's a duplication of logic. Uh, but then you can see that there's a fourth pad here. There's groups of threes and there's a fourth. So it's not obviously perfectly symmetric. One giveaway, though, becomes these uh, pads here. There's obviously places for two bond wires onto the power, two onto the ground. That suggests that this device here has to drive out a fairly significant amount of current, some sort of bus transceiver, bus driver. And um, if you just sort of overlay a, a bit of uh, vellum, you can then, of course, start sketching out the actual um, pin positions and sort of get an idea of what you're looking at. And here we can sort of see it with a bit of paper, classic bit of approach. Um, went back onto the internet and started uh, searching and then I realized uh, this is probably a unibus uh, bus transceiver. For whatever reason, National Semiconductor did a, a second source or maybe they're the primary source, who knows. Uh, the Motorola data sheets have vanished entirely in the web but the national one still exists. Um, long obsolete part, you can't actually purchase it anymore. It's been out of production for uh, decades, I suspect. Uh, really strange voltages, uh, sorry, not strange at all, strange for uh, modern logic, but very appropriate for the Unibus, so uh, very specialized logic. Uh, basically, a bunch of NAND gates, inverters, uh, here's the disable, that's a unique function over here that doesn't get shared over on this side here. Uh, but it looks like this was a real building block uh, for the PDP-11. Let's, um, let's take a look at some of the details. You can sort of see that we're talking only about uh, small dozens of transistors in this design. Uh, let me just zoom into uh, this section here because it's kind of visually interesting. I just printed out on a much larger scale. Uh, and we can start doing actually seeing the actual individual transistors. Let me just sketch around one block here. And uh, this is, of course, the um, uh, end substrates, probably P doped on the, the whole wafer. And then they have these end wells. And then you see here three pads. You know, you think transistor. And of course, you might think right here, and this must be the base in the middle, but uh, it's not that. Uh, easily actually it's uh, a little more complicated than that for whatever reason the base becomes here then the polysilicon comes under here and this is the emitter and this is the collector and that's certainly not uh, that's certainly not uh, obvious but uh, that is indeed how it works Let me just uh, switch to a darker pin here so we can actually uh, see what we're looking at uh, see a base emitter collector uh, and of course if you want to reverse engineer stuff this is what you do you simply go around find the polygons and uh, start looking at the transistors. These things are so neat because they're actually large enough that you can actually do it by eye. If you're reverse engineering a modern a logic node, actually you can purchase programs which will actually do it automatically. If you de-layer the chip, it'll uh, chase away and find the netlist for you. Uh, those, of course, uh, run into the very significant expenditures because uh, they're only sort of purchasable by companies who are really interested in what their competitors are up to. So here we have uh, five transistors, one, two, three, four, five. And um, this one's really quite interesting. You can see that the bases are all connected together. You have the base here, the base here, and the base here. And then the emitters are all connected together. And um, interesting enough, this is the ground here. This is the, the ground uh, portion of it. So uh, the ground comes up, goes in, goes to all the emitters around, around. And interesting enough, it comes back here. You can, uh, you can suspect that there's something going on in terms of design. They don't have just maybe one trace, but they've gone through the trouble of creating a loop, and I suspect there's um, some sort of secondary effect they're trying to achieve. But anyways, what we're getting here, of course, is, is a bunch of transistors where the, uh, the emitter is grounded. Uh, the bases are all going off onto some sort of function, and of course you have to further trace it down to figure what's going on. But we have this whole series of transistors. 
all with uh, the emitters uh, tied downwards. Uh, the collectors um, uh, go off uh, each to a unique function. So obviously we have here just more and more transistors. There's five of them. And then each one goes off into something different. Of course, uh, to solve that down, you have to sort uh, the tracing. Uh, let's see here. And um, here's a classic one. Um, I find using a pen just a very easy way of marking it down. Um, you can see things like the uh, the classic, the ESD diode, this, this sort of fingering f uh, function. So again, in, in, in silicon land, you always think of a diode as, of course, uh, it's always drawn in your coursework as two chunks of silicon, right? It seems very simple, and that's what kind of you'd expect when you look down an actual semiconductor. But, but in reality, what happens is they do it uh, as fingers, and they create uh, lots and lots of surface area because they need to get the electrons uh, spread out and uh, you need more area. So you always see this finger-like approach. Um, let's see, other ones, classic ones. Here's a resistor. It's a bunch of polysilicon. You can see it's weaving back and forth. And uh, they're doing that, of course, to create a, a long uh, polysilicon uh, that you get more resistance. This era, probably looking at 200 to 2 kilo ohms of type resistance you're getting out of this. So, and of course, you can see just how huge this resistor is here. Let me see if I can just circle a transistor to get some better sense. So here's a transistor, here's the body structure, and here's the three contacts. And uh, it's, uh, by it's, uh, it's, the resistor is bigger than, of course, the, the transistor, and, um, and you don't get very much resistance, of course, so there's all sorts of clever design techniques out there uh, to avoid that. Uh, anyways, of course, if you keep on going, you can start sketching it through, and uh, eventually you can sort of build up a schematic, um, and uh, you can find differential pairs and all sorts of things. Um, this is a nice partial trace here of the schematic, and uh, you can start seeing some class of things like uh, the, the you get the differentials. Um, and all sorts of level shifters, it looks like, in this particular design. So um, so there, my mystery solved, actually. I was wondering what this PDP-11 uh, was all about. And it turns out it's this uh, very specialized uh, quad unified bus transceiver, and uh, it was obviously produced especially uh, for the uh, Digital Equipment Corporation and uh, their designs.